Hi everyone, a very big welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day, week, year, life. It feels so good to finally be making this video because I've wanted to do this for a pretty long time. For the majority of my lifetime, I've suffered on and off with UTIs, which is urinary tract infections is one of those things that you don't know how bad they are until you have one and you know a urine infection it doesn't sound that bad on the surface of things but you can genuinely mistake some symptoms of UTIs with somebody suffering from dementia for instance like that's a genuine thing I know someone who was close to the family who had almost been diagnosed with dementia from a doctor when really all they had was a urine infection and sometimes the pain can be so much for the human body that it starts affecting your brain in the way of like seeing things and hallucinating and just it's just a terrible terrible pain that you won't understand truly unless you go through it yourself and obviously I've never had it that much to that extent but it does worry me sometimes that me being at the age I am now could possibly mean that I'm gonna continue getting them for the rest of my life and you never know they could get worse or I don't know I don't want to get to a certain age where I'm unable to tell someone that it could be a urine infection next minute you know the doctors are like swanning me off to a nursing home because I'm staring at walls and acting crazy but more so recently because I don't know how many of you guys watched my weekly vlog not long ago but I spoke about urine infections a bit more because of the fact I've been doing urine at uh, urine because of the fact I've been doing weekly vlogs now I have to kind of tell you everything well not everything going on in my life but it's hard to like film stuff when you feel ill obviously so I've spoken about that for a little while I went to the doctors and they did some um urine tests obviously and then I always get told I don't have a urine infection when I send off my urine always 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 they tell me nothing's wrong with it so they're like on the phone telling me oh it's fine everything's great and I'm like well it's not and then they're usually just like do you want to book another appointment? I don't want this to come across as like ungrateful for the NHS and for doctors and I think they're great. It's my body, it's more my body. Like why can't my pee prove to a doctor that there's something wrong? So anyway, they helped me book an x-ray. That went f that went fine because there wasn't anything wrong with it. Like did I want anything wrong with my bladder or not? D I didn't, I wasn't really sure what I was hoping for her to say. Basically they checked to see if there's like any kinks in the little um, Urine, urinary um they check if you're like just shaped in a certain way to make it possible for you to get utis a bit more than others or they check for other things as well i'm not a doctor so i don't know exactly what they check for but i know that this runs in my family like my mum has them my auntie has them my nan has them they've all had scans themselves and my nan was told that she had a kink in her tract so it meant that like bacteria can get stuck in there a little bit easier and that's why she gets them all the time but it really scared me because i kept like remembering in my head it's okay this seems to run in my family all the women in my family seem to have this. I'm just unfortunate and I get them too. But there came to a time about under two years ago now where I had the worst period for UTIs in the world. It was shockingly bad. It became scary. Like I would wake up and dread it happening in that day. I'd go to sleep and pray that I felt better in the morning. It was a really scary time because I'm such a hypochondriac. And I would drink so much water. I, I remember telling my doctor how much water I was drinking throughout the day and he like literally laughed at me. He was like, why? I said to him, I was like, I've tried everything. Nothing works better than drinking a shit ton of water does. And he was like, well, if that helps and that helps you. And I'm like, yeah, but it means I'm going to the toilet. Like, like every two seconds I'm having to drink water all the time I was like breathing water but then I'd go to the toilet pee it out and I'd be like oh it feels better to me it felt better when my bladder was full as soon as the as soon as my bladder got like shrunk again from not having water in it it felt painful so I remember mentioning that to my doctor because I thought it could be a physical thing of my bladder going on or maybe just the the motion of like something flushing through my tract does help it was a very scary time because I do worry for the worst I think bladder cancer like I started looking into stories about women who thought they had UTI and a bad UTI infection time and time again but actually it turned out to be something deadly and it just it put me into panic stress can make it worse there's loads of different things that can make it worse which does lead me on to what i'm going to be talking about in a minute the things that you can do to stop it and help it and things that make it worse basically i'm not going to sit here and say to you that i've cured myself from it i still do get them every now and again i think that's something i'm just gonna to have to live with as a woman and as someone who was blessed with this curse in my, in my family but it has significantly changed and gone down i can't 
obviously say for sure if it's 100% all the things that I'm doing or if it's just complete like chance. Maybe I just had like a bad period in my life where it was really affecting me. But I definitely can say that I've had enough experience with it to, to sympathize with you guys who have it and hate it. Enough experience to tell you guys what I did, what I learned along the way, because I did so much research. I was on the internet like, <laughs> I was talking to women who I didn't know who had experience of it. I was talking to women in my family who could give me advice and help and things they'd learned and things their doctor had told them when I was learning things from my doctor. The first doctor I had, let me just say, was absolutely useless. He basically told me I was having a bad period and I was like, I know what period pain feels like. I'm not on my period. This happens every single day and has done for the past 12 months. Like, what are you going on about? Just to have like a guy sit there and tell you, it's probably your period, felt so frustrating. It's very disheartening and I'm here for you basically. But the thing that kind of kicked me out the butt and finally make this video was these bad boys right here are sachets from Eucora. I'm gonna tell you this is, a this is a sponsored video and you might listen to me say that and go, oh God, here goes. I saw D-Manos was in it and I was like, I need to try this product. As Demonos was one of the things I saw everywhere, people saying as like the secret drug to like cure you. I was a bit skeptical at first because I didn't really, really want to get my hopes up. This was last year or so when I heard about Demonos being a thing. I did try it. It is a little bit expensive if you get it like as a full blown packet, but I just simply was willing to try everything. If someone said to me that having gold dust worked, I would have gone and bought some gold dust. So Eucora was actually started by a woman who experienced the symptoms herself, which I think is really cool because they understand once again, and it came from someone who was determined to find something and make something work. And she decided to go on ahead and make a product of her own that you can use when you need to use it. And that's really key here because anything to me was better than medication. Like not only were the doctors not giving me it because my urine wasn't infected, but with the amount of times I was getting these UTIs, I would be on medication for ever, it felt like, and I would have to constantly take antibiotics to get rid of it. And you can you can become immune to be to being on antibiotics and they can slowly become less and less effective. So it's so important that you don't just keep going to the doctors and getting antibiotics again and again and again. I know it's painful and I know you just want to get rid of it and you don't care what you've got to do, but it's so important to have like a more of a long-term plan not a quick fix like honestly which is why I want to make this video for you. I'm gonna link down there a link to their website you can have a look if you wish but I'm gonna go on to the main part of this video now which is tips and tricks I've learned along the way of removing a UTI or not getting it in the first place I should say <laughs> now number one is probably the most obvious one that you expect me to say but I'm going to say it because it's the most important and actually the most effective thing that I have ever done to remove a UTI and it's crazy how it is just so accessible and free and <laughs> simple but works so well and that is just water. Now I mentioned some of the things in the ingredients on here for example being like vitamin C and D-manos and that really helps but all in all like water, if you think you drink enough water perhaps you don't or perhaps you're just gonna have to drink more water than a regular person because I have to. People say generally they drink enough water throughout the day but when I think about that, like I rarely see people around me drinking a lot of water. I'm always the girl with a bottle of water with me or a big pint of it and I'm glugging it down. Everyone's like, Jesus, you drink water so fast. Yeah, I'm just used to drinking so much of it to stop myself from getting infections. Sure, I don't drink as much as I used to when I was really struggling and I had to drink water all the time. But for whatever reason it is, having water constantly flushing through your body just kind of stops the bacteria sticking around and being there and it's just key to get that tract flushed. <laughs> like honestly, I'm telling you now, my boyfriend didn't hear the end of me being very, very ill and I wouldn't want to do anything. It was one, it's one of those pains that kind of paralyzes you in a way because you don't know what to do with yourself. I just sit here like this in this position, like lifting myself off the chair or something because for some reason sitting on my bladder hurt. You don't know what to do and he'd say to me like, what can I do? What is it I can give you? Like, how can I help? And I'm just, I'm just saying to him, water is the only thing that will help me right now. If water wasn't available and wasn't working to me, I have no idea what I would have done because I tried antibiotics at one point and that wasn't even helping. It was a mad situation <laughs> and a scary one, but water is your flipping friend, particularly if you 
are more prone than others. And being more prone can stem from things like the shape of your tract, like I was talking about earlier, or just the fact that you're a woman, because women suffer hugely more than men do with them because of our butt being so close to the entrance of our vagina, which is a really cute thing, I know, but it basically means that infection can come from the butt. <laughs> a lot easier for us as it's closer. Which leads me nicely onto the next tip, which is to pee after sex. And why that leads me onto this tip is because if you are keeping hydrated and if there is a lot of water going through your body, then when you have sex, you can easily go and go for a pee afterwards, have lots of water running through your body because sometimes it is difficult. If you are quite dehydrated and you go for a pee as everyone recommends after sex and then a little droplet goes bloop <laughs> and you're thinking, okay, I did my pee, but no, you need like, you need to be peeing throughout the day anyway but definitely a good tip is to pee before ideally and after sex i love how i'm sipping this like like it oh it goes in my outfit but yeah i love how i'm sipping this like it's a cocktail or something <laughs> also while on the subject i just want to say here i don't believe there is a big difference about whether you're using condoms or anything or like certain lube i'm not really sure if that makes too much of a difference but whatever you're doing i think it's it's very beneficial to pee, regardless of whatever you like and prefer. However, I do know that there are some types of birth control out there, like the coil, which can um, affect your UTIs, but that's something you can talk to your doctor with. That's actually something which it can be changed and removed or like your situation can change with that whereas this kind of stuff i'm talking about is things you might slip up on throughout the day or small changes you can make in your lifetime whereas if you've got the coil and you're prone to utis it's probably not best you get that done now earlier on in the video i did briefly speak about why women are more prone to getting utis because of like um bacteria coming from our butt but um but another tip is very kind of related to that because it's a very simple thing to remember, but it's to wipe from front to back. I had to think about that then. I knew what like what the action was, but I was trying to work out how to say it. You probably do this anyway. You might not, you might, you, I don't know. But it's, it's so simple because if just, if you're just wiping from back to front, then if you think about it, you're pushing the bacteria from your poo up into your groin. Which leads me on to the next tip, which is to stay hygienic. If you've got a lot of like bacteria and if, if particularly if it's hot where you live or you get hot very easily and it's like not the nicest for your lovely private parts, it's going to be more, you're gonna be more prone to infections basically. So think logically, like just, it's obvious that there's gonna be more bacteria going on down there if you're not a clean person. Speaking of hygienic, this one usually comes to a surprise to a lot of people, but it will be really beneficial to you if you wear loose slash cotton underwear as pretty much throw out every, actually, what should I, would I recommend throwing out every piece? I did anyway. I threw out every bit of underwear that I had in my drawer, which was tight slightly or not cotton because of the fact that it was getting so ter terribly bad for me that I looked at underwear which was prone to giving me infections with so much anger that I didn't even want to wear them. <laughs> because you need to be breathable down there. The less breathable uh, stuff you're wearing, the the more bacteria can be bacteria and love it down there and that's gross but yeah and cotton's a breathable material as well which is why you're which it's which is why cotton is recommended another tip which i actually learned from my mother because um she's like so about this but cutting irritants from your diet can really help. So there's some things out there that can really affect it, like fizzy uh, drinks or like wine, spicy food, garlic apparently. There's very random things out there you can look into and discover, but sometimes you won't even know that that will affect your urine. You'll think, well, it's food, right? But no, sometimes I can have something, something hot and then about half hour later, I can genuinely feel it. Like if I didn't know what Ellie was doing half hour before and I felt the pain, I'd be like, Ellie, you did it, didn't you? You ate a hot curry. It's always like normal and natural just to pee, get your job done, wipe and leave. But it's really important to get in a good habit of waiting a little bit after you've peed because it's really important that you don't just get up and leave. Like my doctor always used to say to me, what was it? Um, don't splash and dash, which is basically don't just do your business and then get off the toilet straight away. Wait a bit because there is usually a bit in your bladder still there. And if you get up and leave, then that's gonna be sat around in your bladder and that can cause infections 
so wait a little bit longer. I remember being in like shops and restaurants and stuff peeing during a time when I was really ill and I'll just be there on the cubicle like in so much pain like and I would hear people go in the cubicle and rush out so quickly. It's fine to do that, but it it, amaz it amazes me how quickly people pee and just leave and I'm there in the next cubicle. Like, I know I'm in the cubicle for ages because I'm in pain and I'm just like trying not to kill myself, but you're there in the other cubicle like splashing and dashing and it's like, no, I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of what you're wearing down there as well, it's so key not to put any like fragrant products down there just any form of smelly product down there, which is why I had to quit having bubble baths for a long time because just having any form of product up and around you, probably not good if you're prone, which is sad because I love a bubble bath, but I had to stop it for a little while and then I slowly started introducing very like light bubble baths back into my life and it seemed to be okay but I'm just saying things like that can slip you up sometimes you think you might be doing everything right and everything perfectly but something as small as a bubble bath can totally bring it back on again so anything smelly shouldn't be down there anyway your body's perfectly fine with cleaning itself down there um just wash water down there that's all you need warm water and you're fine and the last one I'll leave you with is one I never had to do or anything but once again you might feel like you're doing everything perfectly but Smoking can actually increase your chances of getting UTIs. I don't really know too much of the science behind that, but it's apparently true. I've heard it before. That's just another thing I'm going to throw out there in case you go, oh, I haven't heard that one. That's good to know. <laughs> you might be wondering, or you might not be, I don't know, but you might be wondering why I didn't mention cranberry juice. Now, cranberry juice is something pretty much everyone knows about when it comes to UTIs. Like, when I spoke to anyone in my friends and family groups about having an infection or just being in pain because of that the first thing everyone said was oh have some cranberry drink some cranberry i'm in two worlds about this i hear that scientifically it's never been proven to help in fact some studies have actually shown that it can make it worse if you already have one but then some people believe that having cranberry juice when you don't have any symptoms can uh decrease the chances of you getting infected in, in the first place but i do hear that if you already have a UTI, it can genuinely make it worse. But scientifically, I wouldn't want to recommend it to you officially in a video of me talking about the things that can help because I have heard a lot of things about it not even helping and in fact making people worse. And the last thing I'd want to tell you is to drink cranberry juice if actually that doesn't help you and uh, it will, it could make you worse. It's something to do with um, the sweetness of it, like drinking anything sweet when you have an infection is not good. For down there that's just something i want to bring up because some people will probably mention that in the comments and wonder why i didn't mention it anyway i'm bringing this video to an end now and i would like to thank you cora for sponsoring this video and making it possible because they kicked me up the ass and made me finally do this and talk about this with you and honestly i just am grateful for them and i thank them for um standing on the side of women who suffer with this on a daily basis it sucks thank you very much for watching guys thank you so much to my top patreons for supporting me every day as always, I'm on social media such as Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, so follow me on those to keep updated on all the sorts of shenanigans I get up to. Thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you in the loo because you're probably suffering from UTIs. I hope you get better soon, honestly. Like, I feel you, okay? Bye!